first things I learned is never to ask a man why he's in a hurry. All you got to know is I told a man that he could depend on me because you told me I could depend on you. Now, one of us is going to have a big, fat problem. Jobs are plenty, and land is cheap. Every working man can have his own house. L.A. Confidential is a mid-90s Oscar winner. And we did a piece last year on Janu Dykes in Hollywood. About America's first successful male-to-female reassignment surgery. Meet Ed Exley, an award-winning police officer who has a secret. His able body may appear impeachable, but for Ed, it is a prison of torment. His whole life, he knew that he was somehow different from the other boys. Only later, after a near-death incident involving a former lover, Ed realizes his destiny. Snip the rod and spoil the child. Have a surgeon build him a vagina. Despite his peers' endless taunts and bullying, Ed has to decide. Cave to the Los Angeles cultural elite, or reach out for the happiness that has always dwelled within him. 1997's L.A. Confidential is a pretty good movie, meaning, at the very least, you'll be entertained for a couple hours. Set in the 1850s, we follow three investigators, Edmund Exley, Bud White, and, oh boy, Jack Vincennes. I tried to play husband. I tried to taste the life of a simple man. It didn't work out, so I took a souvenir. The three Los Angeles detectives are caught in a web of corruption, murder, and deceit, like a hummingbird in the clutches of a praying mantis. FYI, if you didn't know this, praying mantises decapitate hummingbirds and then eat their brains. In standard noir fashion, the what, whys, and whos are dulled out like samples at a Sam's Club, each more devious and dastardly than the last. The Officer Jack Vincennes, distraught by the fact he missed out on his chance to sexually assault a young down-on-his-luck actor, is met in his office by Homicide Lieutenant Edmund Exley. Exley has some probing questions about a recently solved case. What's your point? Rollo Tomasi's the reason I became a cop. I wanted to catch the guys who thought they could get away with it. Exley is an idealist boy scout who became more concerned with career advancement than his ideals. It was supposed to be about justice. Then somewhere along the way, I lost sight of that. Notice that when Exley says, somewhere along the way, I lost sight of that. The camera is on him for his entire speech, except this part. The camera is focused squarely on Jack. After the death he may have had a hand in, Jack is feeling the same way. Why'd you become a cop? <laughs> I don't remember. Did you notice how long he pauses? He is sincerely trying to remember why he became a cop, and the best answer he can find is... I don't remember. What do you want, Exley? I just want to solve this thing. Night Owl was solved. No. 
I want to do it right. Thus far in this film's universe, all we've seen from cops is hair triggers and a severe lack of integrity. Whatever it takes to get a check in that W column. Doing it right translates to actually solving the case, as opposed to pinning it on three dead black dudes. That's the worst Two central issues come to mind when thinking of the worst this film has to offer. One, a noir and, in general, film faux pas, show don't tell. To the best of my memory, at least two times, either Exley or White just spill the beans with regards to the whole criminal operation. Spoilers. I checked the and and go way back. His mother OD'd on his boyfriend. And pretend that he didn't know or her the night that I met. I'd say he's tying up his loose ends. Ratchet's dead. He saw you after me. My dick hurt! And the other? Well, you better. He was so angry, he didn't understand the compromises you gotta go through building a lasting relationship. He don't like throw a car at a woman. I'm the incredible plop.